Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a Tower of Fantasy video, and today we're going to be talking about the flame meta with the inclusion of your girl Ruby over here. Ta da! Um, as for how I have access to her, uh, I'm a Filipino content creator. And so my guys, what I'm gonna do today is introduce you to Ruby as well as her move set, her skill kit, her whatever you wanna call it, and see how exactly she performs in the current meta. Because I think a lot of you have seen by now, there are some significant nerfs to La Ruby. But on top of that, her kit is also kind of complex as you can see from the Chinese tooltip over here. I uh, hope this doesn't get released like this. But there are just so many mechanics that are hidden in here, such as damage amplification. We've got burn slash ignite. We've got slow. We've got a vacuum on her dot skill there is a lot honestly to cover with la ruby and so let's start off talking about her normal chain one two three four and five and then you can also do a charge attack at the very end to do that prison thing now this is what we refer to as her n5 or her n5 chain normal five chain whatever you want to call it this has a dps an average dps of 151 percent and that is actually relatively high and it's going to get even higher as we explore her skills a little bit more. The charge skill that you did indeed see, so like this prison thing over here, that one right there, it's okay, it's decent, but it doesn't really do that great damage. So what it does is it imprisons them for three seconds and gets them burning. So you could see the ticks over there. So you can use that prison. Uh, oh, he, he kind of died. So you can use that prison anytime after two normal attacks. So one, two, and then hold, and then it's going to prison. I'm going to go one, two, three, and I can go prison again. And then you can go all the way up to five and prison. However, the unfortunate truth about the prison is that its DPS is actually not that high. And the utility that it gives, I mean, you might find use for it. You might not. What I did want to mention before we moved on was her normal chain. The first two skills, they don't actually hit that far. But if you hit the third skill, it actually goes like homing. You can see I'm uh, hitting through walls and stuff. Um, the one, two is not hitting, but the three, four, five, they are all actually hitting the range character. So look, one, two, nothing. But then the beams come out of the sky and home in on them. So that is actually really nice. And so next up, we have the aerial chain combo. So that's A1, A2, A3. Oh, uh, yep, it shares the same weakness as King. And then you can also do this, which is a charge skill down. The charge skill down that actually gets you like smashing into the ground, it's actually quite decent. However, the aerial combo itself, the full chain, it only amounts up to on average 117 DPS, which isn't actually that good. Next up, what we have is her E skill. Now, this one is one of the harder ones, if not the hardest one to break down. Uh, there are a few things here, so let's have a look. What I've done is that I've translated this one over here into English, or rather I took this one and just replaced the values with our current global version. And so we can actually see the difference between the global and the CN version. So what happens is that when we first use the skill, we will shoot a spark forward and this thing lasts for 15 seconds. When it goes around, it essentially bounces between the target and other targets, as well as the player themselves, and then also slows their target movement speed and attack speed for four seconds. Now, this is where the first nerf is. You can see over here that the cooldown on this target movement and attack speed slow is 15 seconds on CN. On global, we are facing a 25 second cooldown, which is significantly longer. Next, we've got the farther the distance, the higher the damage, up to 700% of attack. What I am gonna say is that it's quite unrealistic to actually go for the whole 700% attack, simply because this damage is based on distance. And especially in terms of like real life practicality, it's quite hard to just like, you know, run far away and then come back kind of, I don't know, it's, just, it's a nightmare. What we have next though is applies the hot mark for 25 seconds and releases four bullets, each dealing 50% of attack plus three damage, that's the flat damage to the target. This is, I believe, unnerved. So as you can see, 700% and 50% and 25 seconds over there. Now here is where the giga nerfs are gonna start. Sparky's basic attack damage to the target marked by hot increases to 30%. Previously, it increases to 110%. However, I do believe it's a translation error. I think it's increases by 30% and increases by 110%. So what that means is that you throw out a spark. This spark goes and hits a target. That target gets marked with hot. And if you attack a hot target, you deal an extra 30% damage. Okay, but we're not done there yet. <laughs> because on top of that, if the target is affected by a burn inflicted by you, when the spark hits them, it will trigger a burn or an ignite, which will deal additional 
damage of 45% of the remaining total damage. What that means is that you have set a target enemy on burning. And so for example, we know that this burn is gonna last for another like 10 seconds and it's gonna tick for like 50% attack every second until 10 seconds. Uh, that would be about 500% attack, right? Or 500% damage. What this part does is that it actually pops the entire burn. So all 500% without going for like the whole duration. And it's gonna do 45% of that 500%. And you can actually stack burns on top of it. And that is why Cobalt A6, I guess, is really, really good for Ruby. You build up those flame stacks, those burning stacks, sorry, and then you ignite them. Now, unfortunately, previously it was 100%, which is a uh, pretty giga cracked. And it did indeed receive a pretty big nerf down to 45%. However, the cooldowns are still the same. Cooldown is six seconds and the skill cooldown is 30 seconds. So what that means is that the cooldown for the burn, for the pop, for the ignition is six seconds, but for the skill itself, it's 30 seconds. And then after all of that, we also have a passive that is attached to this skill, which is utterly insane. So during the existence of the spark, so when the spark is out flying, every time you deal basic attacks, you will gain a stack of heat energy. So you can gain one up to eight stacks and you can gain it every 0.9 seconds. So what it means is that it will take 7.2 seconds to stack up. And then when you get the full stacks, you get ultimate heat energy in which you get flame attack plus 10% for 25 seconds, which is down again from the CN version, which is plus 25%. Uh, it is what it is, but oh my God, this freaking skill is just so long. I'm gonna show you how it works now. So my guys, first off, I want you to observe the normal attack damage before I use any of Sparky's things. So I'm gonna go hit 6.5K. Hit 6.5k, hit 6.5k, uh, 6.1k, something like that. Hit, and that's about 6.4k. Now I'm gonna throw my E. You're gonna see it bounce everywhere. You're gonna see those like orbies go around and hit them, and you're gonna see that they're all slowed down. So them being slowed down, they get slowed down for four seconds, and it's on a cooldown of 25 seconds. Now I'm gonna hit them again. Watch this. Boom, 18k damage. Boom, 17k damage. Boom, 18k damage. Like what? Like what? Oh, it's freaking weird, dude. It's freaking weird because I throw out my thing and then I can auto attack and it does suddenly crazy amounts of damage. And so with that, you can see that they're ticking with those burns over there. I'm going to go ahead and click this number one to then ignite their burn. This is uh, the discharge and that is um pretty freaking crazy. And then the other skill I wanted to show you guys is the dodge attack. Now, the dodge attack does not do too much damage, but it actually groups them like a vacuum. So watch this. Boom. Okay, it's... Okay, uh, I, I don't know if you guys can see it, but they're getting sucked in. Like, trust me, watch, watch it, watch this, watch this. All right, I'm going to go for it. Boom. Look, look, see, they got sucked in, right? I'm not, I'm not lying. It's not cap. It, they actually do get sucked in. Look at that. It's actually, I oh mean, this, this character is just like overloaded. It's freaking crazy. So I'm going to send that and then I'm just going to pop them right now. A funny thing is that if you miss the ball, you see how it's actually coming back to, oh, where is it? Oh yeah, over there. Look, see, it's over there. So there's, there are some times where you can't catch it and so it just goes flying off in the other direction so look, watch this i'm gonna throw it over there and you can see if i don't catch it it's gonna just go away so you just need to make sure so yeah you just gotta kind of make sure that you're you're hitting the, the cube the spark this is the spark remember and then those like four hits are what we talked about the four times 50 percent damage now i'm gonna walk up to it and it's gonna uh yeah, okay, fly into oblivion. But ideally, you want to knock it into the enemy so they bounce off of each other. So just quickly, I wanted to talk about the discharge one more time. So as you can see, that guy is burning right there. And then if I use the discharge, it also does the pop thing as well, where I ignite the burn. So I'm going to go ahead and do the discharge. Um, There's probably too many numbers, but trust me, trust me, it is igniting the burn. It is dealing that 100% nerfed down to 45% damage. All right, my guys, I've played the game for too long, so I've shut it down. And now let's get into our spreadsheet because this is where the action happens. So let's have a look at these guys over here. What I've done is I have done the frame counting. I have done the DPS, the damage per second. So here you can see full N5 is 151% DPS. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take some of these numbers, take the scenarios, the resource consumptions and compare them against our existing fire team because I wanna know, I wanna know where exactly our flame meta stands right now. So from Ruby's point of view, it looks like her normal five chain actually does the most DPS 
more than the aerial one, which is really, really interesting because one of the things that we learned at the start of the game was that generally speaking, most units aerial attacks are better than their grounded normal five attacks. And so before we go ahead and compare Ruby over here to some of the other fire DPSs, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this one over here, the four and five, the normal chain, because what it actually has is a lot of amplification. So this guy over here, if you remember, Sparky's basic attack damage to the target marked by hot increases to 110% damage. On top of that, what we have is that we have advancements, which provide extra basic attack damage again. So your normal five really is not only at 150% damage, as you can see from over here, but it's also got this plus 182% damage or it goes up to 240 for six star. However, please do note that in the global version, I do believe it's gonna be nerfed this one to 80% and this one over here to 160%. Regardless, you guys saw how strong that amplification was, right? I hit 6.5K approximately to those robots. And then like at C6, I was hitting 18K after using my E skill. And so from here, what I can advise is that if you want to get the true DPS of the N5, you're gonna have to plus 30% to this, but then also plus 80% uh, if you have the C1 and then plus 160% if you have the C6 over here. And that is just gonna blow this out. It's gonna blow it to like, 300%, 400%, whatever percent. It's just gonna be absolutely nuts. And it's because of all of these different multipliers that make her the best auto attacker in the game, even on CN to this date. And so it's for these reasons that her N5 is just so incredibly strong. Even when we start comparing it against Cobalt, which has a really pitiful N5, we've got the King even up to three stars, three enemies. That is actually still gonna be less than her base N5 without any buffs. Now, the only one that can actually match them is the Huma, which is only in the Axe form, 160 or 232 at one star. And remember, to get to the one star, to get to this DPS, you actually do have to use the three strong shield stacks. Now, before I keep going, before I forget, credits to Megi for these simulations over here for uh, essentially doing the same calculation that I did, but for a whole bunch of different characters. But yeah, I just wanted to really reiterate, this 151% over here, it's not true truly 151%, it's actually a lot more, especially when you take into consideration all of the different buffs over here and the burn. I freaking forgot about the ignite. If you do have the burns and the ignites, that's not even counted as part of it. And so it just unfortunately becomes uncountable because of all of these different scenarios, right? I don't know how much burn you're gonna be doing with your Cobalt B. I don't know how much, like how many stars you're gonna have, but what is certain is that Ruby is going to be your main DPS. You're gonna stay inside of her for the longest time. Now, who exactly should be our other two characters then? First of all, it's not Cobalt B. It's definitely not Cobalt B. Unfortunately, Cobalt B is gonna be benched until maybe when she gets added to the normal banner so that she can actually apply more burn so that we can detonate it with either Sparky Crash over here or the Discharge Supernova. And so what that does mean is that we should actually be using Ruby with your King and your Huma. Maybe, maybe not. I would say that you could potentially, and this is probably what I'm gonna do, you could probably take out the king and replace it with either Claudia C1 or Tsubasa C3, C1, C6, whatever, whichever one gives the attack buff. Because I think in terms of the flame meta, we are in the era of the hyper carry, in which we are going to be using the Ruby with the hyper carry, using the Tsubasa or the Claudia, we're just gonna juice the rest of the team up, and she is just gonna go ching, 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 and just normal attack. Considering her high normal 5%, I think that with her high shatter at 11.5, she can actually break for herself. There is not really any need for a king or a homer who actually can break really well as well, but she can handle the damage, she can handle the breaking, and so why don't we support that? Let's go give her the Tsubasa Claudia, and as for the Huma, to get this kind of DPS, it's actually pretty good. You could be considering using the dodge DPS, or rather the dodges, for her axe form, however, you could instead be using it for two other things. The first of which is Ruby's dodge in which she creates a vacuum to suck all of the enemies together. Or you could actually be using it on the Tsubasa dodge in which you're getting extra damage by getting those stacks up. And so yeah, I think that this guy over here, 151%, it is very, very hidden. There is a lot of other damage that is going to pop up out of that from all of the different buffs. And so I might do some calculations in terms of like each of these different scenarios. But as it stands, even without any buffs, 
at 151% DPS, he is still already better than Cobalt and potentially even King uh, well, with one enemy. The last thing that I did want to mention is her skill and her discharge. And as you can see, I'm having a lot of trouble actually calculating her like simulated DPS, especially because of the burn and ignite mechanic. For the skill, remember that I said that it was up to 700% damage. On top of that, actually, it goes up to 900%, potentially because of uh, this guy over here, where you attack four times for 50% attack. But we all know that this is not true, this like duration, this is how much time it takes to cast, but we actually do gotta be running around and positioning to make sure that we hit that. Alternatively, you could actually stand still and the ball will come back and hit you and bounce off of you again. But this, my guys, is just the ceiling. It's quite unlikely, especially with the distance kind of function that you're gonna hit this. All right, and so I think that's gonna conclude this one over here. It's a, a Ruby is a tough one. She has just so many freaking mechanics that I don't really know. I mean, I do know, but it just gets really, really complicated when you try to calculate her simulated DPS. I do strongly believe that even post nerf from the CN version or balance, whatever you wanna call it, she is still the best fire character right now especially for your main dps like look at that vacuum what kind of, what, what what how do they give like such an overloaded kit to a little bunny man the one thing that i will note is that her playstyle is very static like i gotta stay in the same place kind of thing it really does feel like i'm actually playing a mage character or like potentially a turret however my guys that is a matter of preference and so at this point i do want to pass off the question to you guys are you guys going to be going for Ruby? Because I really think that she is so freaking good. She is worthy of rolling. Should you pull? Yes, you should. If you, even if you aren't playing a fire team, right? Because you got to have a team for every element. And so my dudes, let me know if you are going to be pulling for this bunny girl. I, I think she is a bunny girl uh, down in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video or kind of found it helpful, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. However, as your girl Ruby once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.